I was a little girl then. The trucks and the motorbikes woke me in the middle of the night. The Nazi soldiers came right down to the water, over there where the boats are kept. They moved quickly. Two held torches. The others placed heavy trunks in the flat boats. I watched them in the dark from this window. The officers held Lucas in their hands. They looked off into the darkness, searching for intruders. When the flat boats were filled, the soldiers rowed them out into the lake. One of the officers walked right up to this window. I flattened against the wall. I held my breath. He looked right at me. But he couldn't see me because of the darkness. Finally, he walked away. The trunks sank quickly to the bottom. The soldiers rode back to shore. Theater 5 presents Lake Toplitz. hill onto the mountain road and I never saw them again. It was a long time before I fell asleep but the young always sleep. How do you know the trunks were filled with gold? Hitler's elite guard had stolen gold bullion from all over Europe. As a boy Hitler lived nearby. He knew the lake. Toplitz is a good hiding place clear and deep. Why is the gold still down there? Amateurs. Some found the trunks but couldn't trace them to the surface. Has anybody died? Yes. Foolish ones without the right equipment. How much gold is down there? I don't know. A million francs. A million francs? Or perhaps nothing. Horse, this is very dangerous. We are strangers here. We know nothing of Lake Toplitz. Darling. Is it worth risking your life? I have risked my life to see the sunset from the top of a mountain and to watch pretty fish swim at the bottom of the Mediterranean. Innkeeper. Yes? Prepare our rooms. We start diving tomorrow. I don't like this lake host. It's too blue, too deep and too cold. It is a lake, dear brother. A mountain valley filled with pure, clean water. No monster. Just one million francs waiting to be claimed. Horst, would you rather die than work at an honest job? An honest job? A carpenter? A plumber? Perhaps a car mechanic or a bank clerk, eh? <laughs> a great check bookworm staggering home to a cold, gloomy apartment? It doesn't have to be like that, Horst. Maria, you are a beautiful young woman. Your cheeks are tan and your body is firm. Do you wish to grow fat and sallow in the city, waiting for your husband to stagger home? What husband? Will you ever give up any of your freedom, Horst? With a million francs, we shall live the life of the birds. We should be close now. The innkeeper gave me bearings between those cliffs. Such beautiful cliffs. After we have the gold, Maria, we shall climb to them. Maria, why so sad? I like to climb mountains, horse, and ride with you in fast cars. I'll do anything to stay at your side. Look, this lake, the secrets. It seems too deep, too dark. I've never seen water so dark. Maria is right, Horst. Reinhold, we are no longer boys. We are men. And to live our lives in freedom, we need money. But there are other ways. Listen to me, both of you. I am diving in this lake today. If you will not assist me, I shall find others who will. Now prepare the equipment. Good 
afternoon, Frida. Good afternoon, Inspector. You are in time for hot bread. Good. Your bread is the finest in Austria. <laughs> you used to say the same to my mother. <laughs> ah, so I did. Your mother and father were fine people, Frida. Well, you must miss them very much. I do. But they've gone a long time, Inspector. And life goes on. Yeah. Ah, Toplitz is such a beautiful lake. But so dangerous. We should put a huge fence around it. Your fence won't bring my parents back, Inspector. Nor my brother. No. Nor all the others. Is it a boat out here? Yes. Three young Germans here on vacation. They are not diving, are they? Oh, no, fishing. The bread is for their supper. It should be cool enough now, Inspector. Well, just one slice, Frida. <laughs> My uniform keeps shrinking. <laughs> Rest in the boat, Hoos. You've gone down enough. I think I found it. Big things on the bottom. Just one more dive. It's getting dark and cold, Horst. We'll mark this spot with the boy and come back tomorrow. I've had a month of tomorrows. Watch the lines. I'm going down. Horst! He's too tired. We should have dragged him aboard. Horst always does what he wants to do. You're losing the sun, Reynold. Yes. <laughs> it goes fast when it hits the mountains. I'm cold. Think how cold Horst must be, even with the suit. Do you think he found the gold? I don't know. If he finds the gold, Reynold, will he marry me? I don't know that either, Maria. Each year I realize how little I know my brother. But you have had fun. You've had wonderful times together. That's what everybody thinks. The brave, adventurous brothers. Always ready for any wild stunt. Sometimes I hate it. Sometimes I hate any... No, Renner. Don't say that. It's not true. <sighs> of course it's not true. <laughs> we are brothers. I don't know what I'd do without my brother. Renner. Maria, you're shivering. You're cold. Here. Take my sweater. No, you need it. Please. Let me put it around you. Yes, sweet. The rope. He's in trouble. Oh, no. Horse, horse must be in trouble. Horse, horse. Horse. He'll we'll get you up. Horse, run us. Oh, not get so him fast. off. You can. Get him off. Easy, easy, easy. No, no, don't worry. Don't, no, don't no. worry, horse. Horse, I'll get you up. I... You'll be all right, horse. Let me out. Let here. me do something. Here, here, reel the line. Yes. Slow, slow, yes. steady. I've got to get these clothes. What are you doing? I'm going to die. See what's wrong. No, no, Ralph, no, uh, not you. Know, I've got to do it. No, it's, it's too cold. You'll freeze. Now keep reeling, come on, keep reeling. Something will happen to you. Keep no, it. no, I don't care what happens to you. Keep reeling. You can't, I won't let it do. Maria, let go. No, no, I don't Maria. want to lose you. I won't. Maria, we can't. Go. Hey. We. The lions don't slap. Horst. Horst. Give me the rope. Look. He's floating to the surface. No. 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 Maria, it's no use. He's dead. I, I know Horst. he's dead. Stop staring at me. Maria. He's dead. No. <laughs> I know you don't feel like talking, but this is Inspector Erhardt. He would like to ask you some questions. Yes, I understand. Miss Walt, I feel very sorry for you and the boy's brother, and I shall make this as brief as possible. Thank you. Why did you come to Lake Toplitz? Horst heard of the gold while we were skiing at Kitzbühel. Mm -hmm. 
As spring approached, he talked of it more and more, and finally he talked us into it. Was Horst an experienced diver? Yes. We originally met at Capri. He tested new diving equipment for a Swiss inventor. He was very strong, you see, and a very good swimmer. Hmm? Why did he drown? I don't know. Do you? Well, Lake Toplitz is very dangerous. There are many strange currents. Near the bottom, anything can happen. Then why do you let people dive in it? We do our best to discourage it. Miss Walt, forgive my intrusion. Thank you. Inspector! How many gold seekers have died in Lake Toplitz? Including your fiancé? Forty-two. Poor girl. She must have loved him very much. Yes. Just as you loved your parents and your brother. I cried for them for many months. I cried night and day. But Maria is young and very beautiful. She will find another man. Perhaps a husband. I was young once, but I was never pretty. Never. My family was my whole life. When I lost them, I lost love. Did you tell them about your parents, Frida? No. I try not to burden others with my problem. Did you tell them about the gold? Yes. Why? They asked me about it. They seem to know already. Did you tell them the story? What story? About you seeing the Nazi soldiers. I can't remember. I have talked with a dead boy's brother. Perhaps I mentioned them. Perhaps. Perhaps still another human being has drowned in Lake Toplitz. Because he believes a half-wit story about Nazi soldiers with torches in the middle of the night. Perhaps. The story is true. I did see the soldiers. They came with trucks and motorbikes. They rode out uh, into the darkness and dumped the heavy trunks in the water. Every day you tell the story. Always the same. Except the value of the bullion grows. How much is it now, Frida? A million francs? Your brother went first, 16 years old, such a bright boy, and yet stupid enough to be greedy. Then your father. He was looking for his son's body or for the gold. Then your mother, a round little bread maker, trying to save your father's life. Frida, why must you tell this story? Because it is true. It is the one event in my life that no one else experienced. You cannot take it away from me, Inspector. The soldiers did come down the hill. I saw them bury the treasure in the water, and the officers stared right through that window and me. Why don't you believe me, Inspector? My parents believed me. My brother believed me. If I am a half-wit, why do so many people believe me? A lust for gold. <laughs> you make it sound so simple, Frida. Just row out in the lake and pick up the treasure. Inspector, I saw the soldiers. It is true. Is it? We shall see. Here, help me lift him out of the water. Cut the head key off. I'm exhausted. What did you find? Nothing. Just the dark log half buried in sand. Are you convinced that your brother found nothing? Yes, I am convinced. All right, men. Listen to me. All in all the boats and all the drivers. Search is over. There is no gold in Lake Toplitz. There is no treasure buried in trunks. We have searched every meter of the bottom. There is no gold in Lake Toplitz. Do you hear? No gold in Lake Toplitz. Captain, head for sure. Yes, sir. Well, it's 
finished? Yeah, it's finished. Austrian government wasted three months and a half a million shillings searching for a treasure that does not exist. At least the drownings will stop. Yes. At least the drownings will stop. Inspector, you and your men are in time for fresh, warm bread. The search is over, Frida. There are no trunks of Golden Lake tartlets. But I saw them. No trunks, nothing. Just a deep, cold mountain lake with dangerous currents near the bottom. They came in trucks and motorbikes. Nothing. Frida. Don't ever tell that story again. The case is closed. People come here from all over Europe to hear my story and to eat my bread. It is all I have. If you ever tell it again to anyone, I shall have you committed as mentally incompetent. <laughs> but I saw the soldier. Frida! Do you want to spend the rest of your life in an asylum? The case is closed. We are leaving, Frida. What will you do now, my dear? Where will you go? Home to Munich, I suppose. Perhaps I can find a job. Don't be so sad, Maria. You are young and beautiful. You will find a handsome man and soon you will marry. Perhaps Reinhold. No, not Reinhold. We share too many memories. If you pity someone, pity me. I was never pretty. And now I am no longer young. I live here all alone. My guests are my only friends. You're a good friend, Frida. Thank you. Thank you, Frida. Goodbye. Goodbye, Maria. Good luck. Goodbye. Why must I always say goodbye? Who will eat the bread? Good afternoon. Are you the innkeeper? Yes, my name is Frida. My name is Sven Johansson. I'm from Sweden. I had a job in Bremerhaven this summer, and I heard a strange story. I heard that Chancellor Hitler buried gold in Lake Toplitz. Is that true? Yes. It happened 20 years ago during the war. I was a young girl then, but I remember it so clearly. The motorbikes woke me in the middle of the night. The German soldiers backed a large truck down to the water, right over there where the boats are kept. Do you have a room for me? Yes, of course. A clean room overlooking the very spot where the treasure sank. And I just made fresh bread for supper. I have friends with diving equipment in Bremerhaven. I shall write them tonight. I'm sorry, I interrupted your story. Two of the soldiers held torches and four others dragged heavy trunks onto the flatboats. I watched them in the dark from this window. When the flatboat was filled, two of them rowed out. Theater 5 has presented Lake Toplitz, written by Jim McGinn, directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Lydia Prochnika, Theo Getz, Klaus Jürgen, Renata Manhart, and Vasek Schimek. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Ralph Herman. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5.